Well, folks, here we are again for another stage or another bunch of stages in the Diagostini GT40 build. This time, part 18 with the associated parts. Looks like a fairly simple one, at least at first glance. Adding on to one of the existing parts that we already have to work with. We'll add some extra light. Um, but this is another piece of the floor pan, by the looks of things, to add on to this larger piece that we already had. So, if we take a look at this first, if we empty out our pieces, we have the primary piece, we have our screws, of course, and we have this smaller piece, and of course, our screwdriver as always. So, what do we have here? Step one, insert the connection plate into the corresponding space. So our connection plate is here, corresponding space is there by the looks of things. Yep, straight in there. Looks like one screw, presumably. Press the connection plate lightly into the engine compartment floor panel. Turn the assembly over, secure with an FP01. Don't need it to be overly tight by the looks of things. It's a relatively simple panel, so I won't overdo it on that one. We can place that there, flip it over. Uh, recover the central floor panel, which is, of course, this piece, the larger piece. And, of course, I, that should have been familiar to me because we've already done it once, <laughs> but I'd forgotten that. So we've got that piece, so logically this is going to be attaching on here, on the other side, most likely. So recover the central panel, align the two posts on the underside, of course, just like I said. Press the pieces together gently, engaging the holes. There we go, so that's not going to stay in there, but yep, that is where we're going. Then turn the assembly over and secure the two pieces together with, of course, two screws. And that one is in. It feels about the same and looks pretty good. So there's the floor piece, and what do we have next? Turn the assembly over, secure the two pieces together with the screws. Yep, we've done that. And stage complete. So that is it. A relatively simple one, of course. For step 18. Now let's move on to 19. So then for step number 19, we have these segments, which I've already opened. Place those off to one side for a second as we open this one up. And it looks like we are going to once again be using the larger floor pan. So I'll bring that one back in as well. So we have that here. So we have these pieces if we empty those out. So uh, I've also adjusted the lighting so it might be a bit better to see as well, hopefully. So step one, retrieve the interior. So yes, we have that and place the left fuel line 19F. So is there is there a notable difference between the two? Ah, so R and L, perfect. So we do have left, so I believe it said left. Yep, left fuel line in housing and position along the left side of the floor. So based on that orientation, it looks to me like it should be perhaps here, is it? Well, that looks more like it's that way around. Left. That certainly looks like the orientation that they've got in the picture, at least. The curve coming over here, curve coming over here. Guess there's one way to find out if we fit it on. Certainly looks that way. Uh, yep, that appears to fit there. Engage in the post with the corresponding holes, turn the assembly over and secure the left fuel line from the underside of the floor with two screws. And that one is in, screwed in, and I wouldn't say you really need to go overly tight on that one. That looks correct to me, we can always undo it if it isn't, but that certainly appears to me at least to be the right way around I think. Yeah, it looks from the image that that's more on the outer side, that's more on the outer side. Uh, put the right fuel line in its position, so basically repeat the steps. Yeah, so repeat the steps on the other side, of course. And now that those are screwed in, there we go. We have our fuel lines installed. So now if we flip over to the next page, 
we now have our two smaller panel pieces here. So position the interior side cover into its corresponding location in the floor. They're identical, so you can mount it either side. Well, that's handy. So if we grab that one and... Oops. So that pops straight in. Presumably that has a single screw. Certainly looks that way. I'll have to drop that out for a second. And bish bash bosh, there you go. Both of those are installed. Both the fuel lines are installed. And then we now have our fire hose. Place that to one side. Turn the assembly over, done that. Place the fire extinguisher onto part one and two, aligning the edges. That seems to be, I will be honest, some of these steps are just a little bit unnecessary. <laughs> like literally putting the fire extinguisher together as two pieces. Doesn't really seem like it needs to be done that way. Just for the sake of an extra part, but sure. <laughs> Whatever. So that one just clips together. Place them together and then insert the posts of the fire extinguisher into the holes in the floor panel. One of the posts is thicker, thicker than the other. Okay, so that is... By the looks of things, that would seem to align up with this shape which would mean that should go here. And once again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going too tight on some of these because these are fairly easy to break parts. So you probably don't want to go too crazy with tightening those up. And I would guess that we're now complete. We are indeed stage complete. So that is another one done. So with that final piece done, that is part 19 done. Now on to part 20. Now, part 20 is kind of a funny one, because it's literally just one of those store it for later kind of deals. So, we have this, of course, which I initially thought was the underside of the chin splitter by looking at it. But no, it is in fact the rear interior partition with the rear window, which makes sense. So that one is just being stored for later on. So, as quick as that, <laughs> we are done with part 20. Now, of course, to move on to 21. So then, for part 21, no sooner are we done with the rear partition, it would seem we are back to it again, <laughs> along with our seat belts. So if we flip over to the back, to our usual instructions, we have our seat belt section, and you can quite clearly see here we are almost immediately getting back to this piece, the partition. So we've kept that one as well. We shall take these out. So with all of that unpacked. Step one is to grab this smaller piece, by the look of it, this smaller round piece, and then place it into this piece here. And it does appear that it is marked as well. So that can slot straight in like that. Just make sure that is correct, it is. And then that will be needing a screw. And with a light tighten, that piece is, of course, done. So, with that one kept in mind, bringing over the partition, we are now attaching the partition. Whereabouts? Whereabouts are we attaching this? It would appear here, perhaps. Recover the rear interior partition, mount the assembled co driver compartment onto the interior partition, press them lightly together. So that looks to me like that is the correct placement. There, I believe. And then, of course, secure. And that should, if it's correct, line up with the screw. Certainly looks that way. Give that one a light screw in like so. And that is bish bash bosh. Done, done, done. So then flip over. Now we have our small piece here. Turn the rear partition over again, insert the ignition coil into the position shown, pressing firmly, secure it from the other side using even a screw. So flip that one over. Whereabouts is this one going in relation to that? So if we put that that way, ah yes, right there. Give that one a tighten, and that one is fitted there as well. Maybe just a tad tighter on that one. Just because it's a little bit further out and susceptible to moving around. But yep, that one looks good. 
Then we have one of our seat belts. Insert the end of the safety harness upper part. 21A, so is there a difference? I'm presuming so. Uh, then flipping this around that direction, or that orientation. Insert the harness through. Presumably that way, I would guess. Got a tiny little connector there. Little anchor point for it. So that one is now through. I love the fact that the seat belts actually have some like fabric aspect to them. They're not just the curved plastic pieces that you typically have, the stiff pieces. So that one's through. Uh, turn the partition over, snap it in. That's done. Assemble the other parts in the same manner. And just like that, as Tommy Cooper would say, <laughs> we've got all of those in place. So, carefully turn the rear partition over and press the ends of the harnesses into the points. Yep, we've already done that. So I'm ahead of you there. Those are all done, as you can see. Stage complete. So that is done. And that is part 21 complete. And with that, we are on to the final part of this episode, part number 22. For this one, we have more parts of our seatbelt, of course. And as you'll see in a second... We also are bringing back another couple of other previous pieces, such as the seats, and of course from just now, the petition with the seat belts as well. So to empty out our parts, first of all. Now, we have step number one. This piece and this piece, bringing those together. Place that one into there. If we get the orientation matched up, that looks correct. So we've got that going in that direction. Insert the engine compartment tank filler into the engine compartment tank. Press it home, turn it over, and secure with an FP01. Give that one a tighten up. Not too tight, because it's not that crazy of a piece. Set that one aside. Then we have, we are bringing back our center piece. Ah, okay, so bring that one back in. Then bring back our center divide here. And then retrieve the rear interior, blah, 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 blah. Insert the tab in location, onto the tank, on the petition. Secure it together using an FP04, so that's one of these larger screws. So I'll prop that one on there ahead of time. And as we tighten that one, that one is now in place. So, retrieve that, that's done. Place the rear window petition, which is here of course. Flip that one over. Place it in there. Is that the correct way? Let's try flipping that one over, see if it fits better. Yeah, certainly seems to fit better that way. Uh, corresponding space and press into place. So now for the next piece we need our seats, of course, which we've got there. To install the lower safety harnesses, take the previously assembled seats and Insert the ring end through the seat into the slot. Turn the seat over and press the ring end into the pin. Pop that onto there. And there we go. That's the first one complete. And that is far more fiddly than it seems like it needs to be. <laughs> but now presumably we'll be repeating that. So that's pinned in. Step two, press the ring end of the safety harness over. Yes, indeed. So basically repeating the process four times over. And with that final one through, with plenty of coaxing, it is finally in. So uh, repeat this process to fit them all, and that is stage complete. So we have that stage fully finished. That is stage 22. So we have our seats there, and we have our central partition. Whoops, with the window. And the window only seems to be kind of staying in place with a bit of a click. Maybe I just didn't press that in correctly. I'm not sure. The window doesn't seem to be that well secured in, to be honest, but we'll leave it as is for now. And as I said, that is it for this piece. And that is it for part 22. And of course, for this episode as well. So the seat is done. Our central petition is done. The central window area is only barely held in there 
so presumably another piece will hold that in down the line. But for now, thanks for joining me again for another episode, and of course, I'll see you next time.